All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So uh, sitting out here in the Freedom Shack trying to get this thing straightened up. Got the build going on here. Uh, find some butt stocks laying around. I'm going to use this one right here. This is a Magpul. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So uh, last night I did a video on about the governors in certain states trying to uh, take your privileges or your rights. Not privilege. It's a damn right. The Second Amendment is a right, and it's more important now than ever because you actually have law enforcement out there who say, hey, listen, unless it's something life or death, we're not responding. Uh, then you got L.A. County out there who's decided they're not going to take any more uh, gun permits or, or, uh, and, you know, even Wake County here in North Carolina. And I can see it. Uh, they were pushing 90 uh, pistol permits a day and it instantly went up to 300 and with the, the the coronavirus and all the other cool stuff and i mean even in my line of work i'm fighting the coronavirus battle right now uh and trying to gain access and a bunch of other stuff because people just man they're scared and that's that's fine but last night we were talking about the governors taking away your second amendment right by closing down ffls uh, making them, well, deeming them non-essential. So it's in accordance with their declaration of emergency, they're non-essential and they should shut down, yada, yada, yada. And J.B. Pritzker was the only one who set up there, you know, along with liquor stores and weed dispensaries uh, and gun stores are essential to uh, life. Smart move on his part because imagine if he had left the liquor stores and the weed distributions and said, no, we got to close the gun stores down, which would have been absolute BS. Well, guess what? Remember when I mentioned the jackass up there, uh, the gentleman named uh, Tom Wolf, governor of Pennsylvania, he uh, decided that gun stores were non-essential. As a matter of fact, there were a couple of individuals, a uh, lawyer uh, and a gun, uh, gun store, who sued. Now, Justice Weck, the gentleman I mentioned last night, uh, he, they dismissed the case. But he did say that that specific uh, thing that Wolf did, I mean, my, my mind's been going crazy lately, I've been working too hard, uh, was putting tension on our Second Amendment right. I just got an email from my good friend Gabriel, from, uh, and he sends me uh, the blog from the Prince Law Offices, uh, the Working Families Law Firm. And it states this, Pennsylvania governor backs down, declares gun dealers are life-sustaining. <laughs> and this all goes back to the whole thing, give an inch, take a mile. They gave this guy an inch, and he decided to take a mile. Because he doesn't consider anyone who needs a firearm, or he doesn't consider the Second Amendment as a right. It's a privilege under his umbrella. Only I can allow you to have a firearm which is asinine. It's kind of like New Jersey up there. Uh, right now, they're getting sued. Murphy and his head of state police, the Gestapo. Unreal. Let me read this thing. In an update list, sustaining businesses published at 2.30, the life-sustaining businesses published at 2.30 on March 24, 2020, Pennsylvania Governor Wolf has declared the federal firearm licensees currently referred to as gun dealers constitute life-sustaining businesses due to the concurring and dissenting opinion of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice David Wecht, joined by Justices Donahue and Dougherty in the civil defense firm PC et al. versus uh, the civil rights defense firm uh, et al. versus Governor Wolf. All right, so let me read this thing, okay? Uh, you can you can actually do this at Prince Law Offices, but, you know, you're here. You might as well hear it from me, my beautiful radio voice. All right, except that firearms dealers may operate physical businesses on a limited basis to complete only the portions of the sale transfer that must be conducted in person under the law, subject to the following restrictions that all sales... All such sales transfers will be conducted by individual appointment during limited hours only so as to minimize social interactions and congregations of persons. Number two, the dealer will comply with social distancing, sanitization of applicable area between appointments, and other mitigation measures to protect its employees and public. This need not necessarily take the form of generalization exception to the order or any and all firearm retailers, although such retailers have been classified essential elsewhere in our nation to the contrary just as governor has just as the governor has permitted exactly 
Restaurants to offer takeout service but restricted dine-in options. The governor may limit the patronage of firearm retailers to the completion of the portions of the transfer that must be conducted in person. Such an accommodation may be effectuated while preserving sensible restrictions. Sensible restrictions. Isn't that the funny thing? They always, their backup words, sensible. It's sensible. Seriously, everyone is, you know, subject to sensible regulations. You remember that when uh, Hillary Clinton said that? All of our Bill of Rights are subject to sensible regulations. The, the founding fathers are rolling over with that bitch. Uh, designed to slow the bread, blah, 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 but nonetheless provide a legal avenue for the purchase and the sale of firearms, thus avoiding an impermissible intrusion upon the fundamental Constitution right. Well, golly, thank you so much, dear Tom. And I'm being facetious when I say that. I hope you guys are too. But anyway, uh, you know what? Way to go to the guys over at the Prince Law Offices and the Civil Rights Defense Firm. Thank you for pushing this and getting some reasonable judges to understand that the Second Amendment shall not be infringed. It's Code Boy 32. If you like this video, uh, you know what? Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform who fight for our freedom as it was written by our founding fathers. 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. I got to get back to work. I'm almost got the workbench over here. Almost straightened out. Reloading bench. I put so much crap on it after I went to the store. Uh, I had a shelf collapse. And every, it went everything. It's everywhere. So anyway, cheers to you guys. Uh, Hope you're all healthy and uh, safe. Let's go to Boy32. I'm out. Thanks, Gabriel. Thank you so much.